Are you tired of losing to all those demon hunters zooming around the map? Well, don't worry, because today we will be teaching you five skills you need to master in Season 3. And lucky for you, four of them are really good for countering those demon hunters. Before we start, be sure to check out skillcap.com. Everything at Skillcap is backed by a rating gain guarantee. Yes, we literally promise that you will go up in rating while using our guides, and if you don't, then you shouldn't pay. Visit the links below to get started, but for now, let's get back to the video. The first skill we want everyone to start practicing is the art of late kicking. Now, if you've been PvPing for a while, you might remember the montages that featured fast kicks. Whether it was Neilio kicking Feldom, or Waz screaming at the top of his lungs that he pre-kicked some cast. Over time, we all have developed this basic idea in our heads that kicking fast is cool and makes you a good player. But these days, there are two huge problems. Number one, the WoW servers no longer run on dial-up internet. And number two, Precog exists and doesn't seem to be going away. Lower latency means your kicks are more reliable, but now missing kicks is more punishing with Precog. This punishes you for always kicking fast, since most players tend to juke the front end of their spells. The solution is to mix in late kicks more frequently. Doing so helps bypass the common juke range and play a mind game with your opponent. The best players are actively doing this every time they play Arena. If you watch Raikou, he will frequently interrupt very late into enemy casts, sometimes almost dangerously close to the end, because with lower latency, his kick will be more reliable and he doesn't have to worry about getting juked. Late kicks can then create this mind game, where your opponent will try and repeatedly fake over and over, ultimately causing them to juke themselves. Even melee players like Calvish will do the same, holding his kick until the end of casts to make sure they are more guaranteed. Two different players from two completely different eras and regions, both having the same kicking technique. Now, this doesn't mean you should late kick every time, since there are some cases where you have no choice but to quickly stop a cast. On top of this, some channeled spells you'll want to kick early, like Ray of Frost, since late kicking here makes no sense. But the real mind game is making your kicks less predictable, which means varying up your kick timers occasionally, kicking late if you notice your opponents juke early, and on the flip side, kicking early if you notice they start juking later. But don't get stuck in the past. The days of pressing your kick as soon as you see a cast bar are long gone. Speaking of being stuck in the past, the era of humans and orcs seems to be over for the first time in ages. And if it wasn't obvious by now, Night Elf is now the best race for any serious PvPer. So if you play one of these classes, there's a high chance you should be Night Elf for one clear reason, Shadow Melt. This is arguably the most broken racial in the game, but only if you know how to use it. And as we promised earlier, Shadow Meld will be an incredibly useful skill to master against Demon Hunters. Because as you should know by now, Shadow Meld can immune airborne spells, which actually includes the hunt. As long as you press Shadow Meld right before the Demon Hunter reaches you, you can completely immune its front-loaded damage. Now, you still take dot damage, but who cares? Shadow Meld's immunity period even makes it a pseudo-defensive, like Bubble and Vanish combined for a few milliseconds. Here, Mercy is stuck in cheap shots and is dangerously low, but use his Shadow Meld the instant he can, immuning the incoming Arcane Barrage while also dropping target from his opponent, which buys him just enough health to stay alive. Seriously, Shadow Meld is broken, but we're not done yet. The target dropping part of Shadow Meld is insane versus some of the most dangerous spells like Ray of Frost. Here, Marrow will start channeling Ray, and Waz trades with Shadow Meld, stopping the channel while effectively blocking half a million damage without even needing to burn Cloak or Vanish. And of course, if you play a healer, you already know the power of Meld Drink. The ability to instantly drop combat to take some sips is one of the most underrated tools, and is a godsend in 3v3 if you play a healer that has mana issues. Now, honestly, there are tens and maybe even hundreds of ways to use Shadow Meld in WoW PvP, but we want to hear from you. What's the craziest Shadow Meld you've ever seen? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're doing that, we have two skills for some spells you probably have in your toolkit, Nox and Roots. But are you using them properly? Let's find out. So, we already know that Nox are amazing displacement tools on any map, especially ones with the infamous Z-axis. A Shaman thunderstorming melee off edges, ramps, or even cliffs is one of the oldest tricks in WoW. But these days, we can do even better, with Disc Priests and Demon Hunters being meta and Resto Shamans being, well, just Resto Shamans, there are a few spells you need to look out for. Any AoE defensive, like Darkness, Barrier, or Earth and Wall Totem, can be countered with a well-timed knock. Yes, you heard that right. Knocks can completely counter one of Demon Hunter's best utility options, which is huge value given that the cooldown of most knock effects is relatively short compared to most major defensives. And now, with mobility being at an all-time high, knocks are an incredible asset in the mobility arms race. One reason why some mages are just impossible to attack 
is because they use their knocks effectively, holding them for moments where they can use their efficient knockback as a gap creator to stay ahead on mobility. Knocks are even good when used on enemy healer, which is definitely something people don't do enough. The displacement is like a pseudo CC if it's used to knock the healer away from a pillar and into the open to chain with more CC or simply away from their partners who are across the map. Knocking healers is like a cheat code to chain a few extra seconds of CC while DRs reset. Knocks aren't the only CC with high value in the modern meta because right now roots are quite strong too. But are they good into Demon Hunter? The answer is yes. Demon Hunters on paper have two ways to break roots, Cleansed by Flame, which is a PvP talent that they generally don't play, and Reverse Magic, which most of the time they want to use on their healer to break CC. So even though they can break magical roots, it's pretty uncommon. Unlike other melee, Demon Hunters also have no way of breaking physical roots, which is why abilities like Steel Trap are insanely good into DH. So if you were wanting an effective peel against Demon Hunters, look no further than Roots. But DH isn't the only class where Roots are strong. And there are actually two popular ranged DPS where they also come in handy. Do you know who they are? Beast Mastery Hunter and Demo Warlock. BM Hunters are shaping up to be quite strong this season and will now even have more pets thanks to their tier set. Now, if you don't know by now, Roots are a great peeling option against BM Hunters when used at the right time on their pets. If you see Bestial Wrath, your goal is to root as many pets as possible, focusing on the Hunter's main pet, since it's the one that controls Kill Command. If you don't have an AoE root, you might have an AoE fear, but keep in mind that many BM Hunters will be playing the Beast Within against Warlocks and Priests, which makes it much harder to reliably control the pets for some classes. And speaking of controlling pets, don't forget to break out those AoE CCs for the Legion of Demons summoned from Demo Warlocks. With the small redesign in 10.2, Warlock damage has shifted slightly away from Tyrant and more towards the actual demons themselves. If you see Fell Obelisk and Tyrant out at the same time, that means it's time to avoid the pets at all costs, which can be done with any form of AoE CC. It doesn't matter what bracket you're playing. Roots are better than most people think, especially into three very meta specs that you will encounter quite often. And if you are a solo shuffle enthusiast, listen up because there is one final skill you need to be developing in the early season, aggressively trading. Almost every solo shuffle lobby has one key moment that you need to be ready for. It's always at the start of the game when everyone has all of their offensives ready, which turns the arena into a blender of CC and damage. What you decide to do in this key moment of the match will either make or break the rest of the game, since this is typically where the biggest momentum swing can occur. So in order to keep momentum neutral or even swing it in your favor, you need to aggressively trade defensives during the early stages of the game. Now, this doesn't mean throwing all of your CDs at the enemy team's offensives, but instead thinking about what cooldown you can trade most efficiently. As a mage, you wouldn't want to ice block the first exchange, but something like Alter Time is a great choice due to its low one minute cooldown. Healers also need to think about this opening exchange, pre-planning to use a major defensive early on their teammates prior to taking any CC. Disc Priests are lucky enough to have two charges of pain suppression, which can be used while stunned, which makes it a highly efficient option for the early game clash. In fact, if you are a healer struggling this season in solo shuffle, and you find yourself needing to spam heal all game, it could be due to the fact that you are greeting your CDs, when instead playing more aggressive with defensives means you don't have to heal nearly as much. All right guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little bit more about Skill Capped. So we offer a 400 rating guarantee and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well, in fact, that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of WoW PvP guides on the internet. With over 1,200 guides curated into over 300 courses across every class, no one can compare. We also have a growing library of over 1,600 arena commentaries where rank 1 pros and AWC champions teach you how to play your toughest matchups. And if that wasn't enough, skill cap members can also join the premium section of our Discord server where they gain direct contact to our network of pro players. This feature has helped players just like you reach their rating goals. We hope you learned a lot from this video, but let us know in the comments below what you would like to learn this season. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.